Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Previous speakers have given some background as to how they came to be involved in this uh, campaign. Uh, I will follow their example. Uh, it was announced to me by the Greek ambassador in Pretoria that the Greek government saw, saw it fit to acknowledge me, not appoint me, because if they appoint you, they've got to pay you. Uh, they, they have been acknowledged as an honorary ambassador of Hellenism. I couldn't go to Greece to get the prize, but I uh, uh, asked uh, the ambassador that gave me the piece of paper, what did this mean? What did I have to do? And he said, George, you will know what you have to do. But in his speech, he said that Melina Mercuri was the first person appointed or acknowledged as an ambassador, and I should be proud to have followed her example. I then, uh, the ambassador told me that there was a British committee and I should get in touch, and I got in touch with Eleni and uh, Anthony Snodgrass, and uh, I'm relating this just in case you expect an independent view from me, you are not going to get it. <laughs> uh, and this is why I took the opportunity of explaining how I became involved. One of the things that uh, Eleni and uh, uh, Anthony Snodgrass and I uh, decided to collect money and publish uh, Christopher's uh, book with a new preface by Nadine Gordemer. Uh, Nobel Prize winner. I was fascinated by Hitchens's book and uh, got my colleagues to write a memorandum uh, about the legality of uh, the uh, taking away from the Parthenon the uh, the, the statues, the portions that are in the British Museum. Uh, we were enthusiastic, came to a conclusion, and I recognized one of my mentors, Cedius at the Johannesburg Bar, Sir Sidney Kentridge, who is a city in the front row, hello Sydney. Uh, we showed him the memorandum. Uh, he's a great advocate and said the legislation uh, authorizing the, or rather accepting that the uh, handing over to Elgin was lawful is a very big uh, hindrance, you would not overcome it. And we were persuaded that there were so many philelines, particularly in the United Kingdom, that we should shelve this idea of going to court and try to persuade the museum uh, public opinion, the House of Commons, the House of Lords, that they should do the right thing. And we have been trying. We are rather pleased that there is, due to the situation that Greece finds itself in recently, uh, People have been saying this is a good opportunity for us to do something 
to acknowledge what ancient modern Greece has done for democracy, for civilization, and to make a gesture. And we will continue calling for the return. The threat of litigation can't be set aside altogether. <coughs> There's a Greek expression that even saints may sometimes be influenced by threats. So we're not abandoning it because the validity of the document which was eventually produced by one of uh, uh, Elgin's assistants, Mr. He had the title, Hunt, is not a valid document. We have it on the authority of a number of experts. We have checked it against a number of, I would like to think, impartial Islamic uh, scholars who have assured us that the piece of paper that was presented to Parliament in 1816 is not a firman, it is only a draft of a letter which uh, the assistants of uh, the Lord hoped to persuade the authorities to uh, give uh, him leave to take the marbles away. The evidence has been growing. You've heard two speakers today, uh, Dr. Korka and one other, saying unequivocally that the documents unearthed in Constantinople in particular show beyond any doubt whatsoever that particularly not Elgin, but his assistants actually uh, manufactured a document. The minority in the House of Commons was calling for proof that there was a firman. They were persuaded that the piece of paper in Italian could be described as a firman <coughs> and although more than a third of the members of parliament dissented, the majority accepted it and paid Elgin the 35,000 pounds. Not as much as he wanted, 100,000 pounds, but a handsome. The idea that he did it for the purposes of saving them is nonsensical. The idea that he did it for the public good is contradicted by the evidence that he put them in storage in order to beautify his private home in Scotland clearly shows that myths have been created as to the purpose, as to why Lord Elgin removed them. We Greeks hold in the highest possible regard the absence of 60 odd pieces of sculpture 
away from their home. I spent over an hour and a half with Mr. McGregor. He doesn't understand what it means to us Greeks at all. In a pamphlet which I picked up when I visited the museum, the Parthenon is described as a ruin. And during our lengthy discussion, I said, you know, it's offensive for us to, for the Parthenon to be referred to as a ruin. Without blinking an eyelid, he said, it is a ruin, Mr. Bezos. What are you talking about? It is a ruin. He doesn't have regard to one of the heroes of the revolution, which was started in the 1821, and when the Parthenon was cleared of the Turkish garrison, a couple of the workers were selling bits of marble lying on the ground on the Parthenon. El Macroyani is the hero of that revolution, stopped them and said, now you mustn't sell them. This is what we have been fighting for for three and a half centuries. This is part of us, our lives. Fortunately, I believe that Mr. McGregor is in a minority. It was with great pride that we saw, after a recent debate, the callers in saying, send them back to Greece, were 946 is against five point something that they said keep them. We are involved in a campaign. It may well be that the McGregors of this world or those that think like him say, well, Greece is in a very sad state. They can do nothing. They haven't got money to pay their workers. They haven't got money for this, that, and the other. They don't understand Greek history. The number of occasions Greece was practically burned down, but rose like a phoenix. And we are confident that it will happen again. I know that we haven't got very much time. What I've had to say is down on paper. I will stop there. And I want to thank you, Mr. Chairman, and members of the committee, the members of the, the leaders of the people, the Greek people in Australia and the United States for the steps that they have taken. We will, in South Africa, follow you. We know that the people of New Zealand, under the influence of the Stikonom, have already done so. And we will, without abandoning the litigation threat, try our best to persuade the people of the world, and more particularly the people of the United Kingdom, as to what is the right thing to do. Thank you very much for your contributions. We will continue, and reasonably certain that we will succeed. Thank you very much. George.